Hello everybody and welcome to your next C-Sharp XNA tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning about distance collision or as others like to call it circular collision. So circular co circular collision or distance collision uh it, it's, it's really good. It really uh it, it's mainly meant for circles uh, uh it's used a lot but not as much as bounding box collision. But uh, it can be really effective when uh, doing collision with circles and is more precise than using uh, bounding boxes for circles. Sorry, but, uh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. But, yeah, so let's get into this. So basically, uh, in finding out the distance between uh, circles and stuff, we use a distance formula or what I, or what is known as the Pythagorean theorem and the distance formula derives from the Pythagorean theorem so let us go to paint for a while now there's two different methods I'm going to be showing you how to uh, on how to do distance collision the one I'm showing you right now based on Pythagorean theorem is the most precise way to do it right in my last in my in my SFML made easy tutorial series when I taught this I taught about uh uh, doing it with absolute values and although that method works well and, and the collision still seems precise uh, it, it isn't precise to the T it isn't perfectly uh, the, the right collision but uh, it, it could still work I'm going to be showing you different methods but this method is the most precise and if you're really into precision precision and really want um, precise collision and don't want anything or any glitches or bugs or errors then I suggest you do it this method okay uh, so what is the Pythagorean theorem well the Pythagorean theorem is uh, when you have a right triangle you have your opposite and adjacent side and you have your hypotenuse and to get the hypotenuse uh, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared now I have a D there because a D is representing distance okay so imagine this is our player and this point is our our enemy or object or whatever this is this line is a distance between the two points that is what uh, the hypotenuse is representing so in order to find a distance of it we have to find the we have to know the a squared we need to know the b squared and then we have to uh, to find the c squared so essentially in order to find the value of d or the the side of c or the distance is going to be equal to c well, c is going to be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared that is essentially the formula right uh so how do we find a squared and b squared so like a for example is going to be the player's x position uh subtract the uh the enemy's x position or the oh it's so hard to type with, with a i'm using a laptop but yeah i'm using the whatever the touchpad so the a is going to say the a is going to represent the a uh represent the player's x position subtract the enemy's x position and the b is going to represent the player's y position subtract the enemy's y position um and you can do it in any order. You could do like uh, enemy y subtract player y. It doesn't matter because the good thing about uh, doing it to the power of 2 is that even if the value is negative or positive, you're going to end up with the same value. For example, say y is equal to 10 and uh, enemy's y position is equal to 12. 10 minus 12 is equal to ne negative 2. Negative 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 4. If you switch this around, 12 minus 10 is equal to 2, and 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 4. So you're going to end up with the same number regardless, so it doesn't matter who subtracts to who. So then once you do a, um, a squared plus b squared, now you find the square root of a squared plus b squared, that's going to give you the distance between the two objects, between the player and the enemy. So that's essentially what we're going to do. So how are we going to do this using C sharp? So what I, what we're going to do is we're going to make a double and we're going to name it distance, okay? Uh, we remove all the code from the last tutorial, well, um, all the collision code from the last tutorial. So look at this distance formula right here. So we say that distance is equal to this math dot square root. So we're using the math class, but we're finding the square root of, and we have to use math dot power to do it to the power of two. So 
this is this let's say that this is the a so this is going to be a squared and this is going to be b squared okay so the square root of the player's position x subtract the the uh, enemy's x position and we're doing it to the power of two or uh, yeah so we're, we're doing it to the power of two and plus the uh the uh player's y position subtract the enemy's y position to the power of two and therefore at the uh after all these calculations that will give us the hypotenuse so that will give us a distance between the player uh and the enemy so if we go back to our code all we have to do is that uh, my image right now my image is a square right it's a square sprite and this formula is mainly, mainly for circular collision so normally what you would do is you would find the radius of the of the player i guess plus the radius of the what you're trying to collide with and then if the if the distance is less than or equal to the radius of uh those two or maybe if you wanted to make sure this collision you can just do less than so if you do distance is less than the radius uh of the player plus the radius of what you're colliding with then therefore there is a collision otherwise there's no collision since i'm using a square object and uh, since it's not rectangular since the square uh then uh my square is 20 by 20 so basically uh it's basically saying if distance is less than 20 then therefore there's a collision so if i run this program so what we get so if i run it and i touch uh the enemy uh you get a collision so no matter where you touch it you get a collision so that is the uh proper way to go about it but there are alternate methods all, always to do stuff um, in computer graphics. Uh, as you've noticed so far, like in bounding boss collision, bounding boss collision isn't the most precise collision. You don't get a collision to the T. Like if, in pixel collision, you get perfect collision. That's what they call it, like pixel perfect collision. Because you get the, uh, as soon as a pixel touches uh, another pixel that's supposed to collide with, then you get a collision. So... Therefore, the collision is perfect on the dot. Uh, with bounding box and stuff, it's not always a, a, the exact type of collision. So if this one, if you're not uh, so keen on being precise, you, you don't care, you're, you're kind of carefree about it, uh, this method, it, it'll still calculate collision, uh, but it might not be as precise as you want it to be. But it, with this method, it kind of it might work better because for for an example if we run if we run the program again with the previous code this code is more precise and as soon as you touch the edges like like so there's a collision but in most in most games say you collide with something uh you might it might be a wall or something you might cl uh, collide with the wall and then once you collide with it it will kind of push your player back or something because you've collided with it or say you collide with an enemy or something and you touch the edge of the enemy like so right uh and some people like some games you just don't want uh the perfect collision sometimes you want it that the real like the player hovers over it like it's clear that the player is actually touching the object before you actually check for collision right and uh i don't some games you might want to do that some games you don't but it's up to you so let us go back to paint one more time so uh let me let me kind of uh okay let me drag this up right here so with the formula we have right now uh the formula we have right now what i was saying before is that no matter how which order you put this in it since you do to the square root it's going to return um a, a, a positive numerical value which is what you want and that is like an absolute value so instead of doing everything to uh the square root etc etc then there, you can always you can you could kind of use this formula this formula is not as precise as the other one but you could do this if you find the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b then you can equal that to c and then therefore that will give you approximately the distance between the two objects right so examples right here so say the and the player y is equal to 12 and the no the player y is equal to 10 and the enemy y is equal to 12 10 minus 12 is equal to negative 2 but what the absolute value does 
is that it uh, the absolute value returns the positive value between the two. So therefore, it will return negative. It will return positive two instead of negative two. So once we do that, instead of doing uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we could just find the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b, and that will give us c. Um, it's not the the most precise method of going about it, uh, but it, it, it kind of works. For example, if we if a is equal to say five and b is equal to five, using the Pythagorean theorem, five squared is equal to twenty five. So twenty five plus twenty five, I and mean, if we find the square root of those, uh, so sorry. So if we find the square root of twenty five, and put this into view, and we find the square root. The square root of twenty five is going. I no, sorry, the square root of fifty. Sorry. So if we've, twenty-five plus twenty-five is equal to fifty. If you find the square root of that, we get seven point uh, zero seven. So we get our approximately uh, seven. The distance is approximately seven. Now, if we use my method, uh, we do uh, the absolute value. Uh, say we do five plus five. So five plus five is equal to ten. So therefore, the approximate distance between them is 10. Now, in reality, you're only three pixels off. So it's not that big of a difference. Uh, and the collision is still going to seem precise, but it actually isn't that precise, if you know what I mean. And if you really need precise collision, uh, or like uh, you need to say you want to check to see if the distance between them is 200 pixels away or something, then something happens. Or say you have a two player game when like uh, two players are playing and you don't want them to get too far apart from each other on the screen, so you set a minimum distance they could be apart from each other. Then you're going to want to use the Pythagorean theorem. But if you're not really so concerned about uh, precision, then uh, this this method can could work for you as well, right? Uh, so yeah, so let us get, so let's get back into this uh, this code again. So if you want to do this method that is not uh, so restricted or whatever or not as precise, then you can use the absolute value. So what we do is distance equal to math uh, dot absolute value. Uh, the absolute value of position x subtract 100 plus the absolute value between position our player position y subtract the enemy's position y. And if we run this code, let's see what we get. If we touch a player, there's still collision. So it seems it seems like right here, see, it's kind of overlapping, and we don't really get a collision. But once you get closer to the enemy, you get uh, a collision. So it's not as precise, but it, it still works. So whichever method uh, you prefer, it's up to you. But I would prefer to use the first method. So thanks for watching this. Hope you enjoyed this, and bye.